Right. So yesterday I made a video over Labour's National Policy Forum, which was more of a no policy forum, as the case was, since the party appears to be too afraid to stand for anything and certainly isn't interested in the ideas and policy desires from those who support and fund the party, the members, the local politicians and the trade unions. And I said there may be a reason for that yesterday. So have a listen to this a minute. Speaking alongside Blair-era Minister Peter Mandelson at a business roundtable in late January, Starmer said he wanted to extract as much as I can from you, have a really grown-up conversation, and also for you to see that it is possible to mould, have your fingerprints on what we're doing. Two people present told Politico. That's the first few lines of an article written in Politico Europe, a German-owned news outlet from back in March, about a meeting Starmer held with his luciferous handler, Peter Mandelson, as told to them by two people present to a load of business leaders. And it would seem one key reason why Starmer may not want to take policy direction from the Labour movement is because he's putting policy up for sale. I'll say it again. Extract as much as I can from you, leaders of industry, have a really grown-up conversation, and also for you to see that it is possible to mould, have your fingerprints on what we're doing. That was the quote. How else would you read that? Now, of course, this is just one outlet, perhaps not a wonderfully well-known one. But how often do you find the news reported by foreign-owned outlets turns out to be far more honest and a lot better than the ones we actually have native to this country? Now, for those of us who have followed, even been victims of what Starmer has been doing since he became leader of the Labour Party, this likely is of no surprise. He worships at the altar of Tony Blair. Blair chased the membership away in disgust, and so Starmer has done the same, making sure they go if they won't go willingly even. Had to really, didn't he? He knew he'd only get the job from a membership enthused by what Corbyn began by pretending to be the same, and then once in, turned on them, and suspending Corbyn drove away even more all the faster. And of course, then there was the purging. Those wanting to hang in there, well... Let's see. Let's purge them retrospectively. So even if they think they've done nothing wrong, let's tell them otherwise. Long story short, the membership of the party has been decimated since Starmer took over. By last summer, 170,000 members had gone and the membership will only have kept going south ever since. That's a lot of membership fees drying up, but that's how they want it. The treatment of the trade unions at the National Policy Forum, though, and their reaction to it is something else, though. Without the unions, Labour will collapse. It's the lion's share of the party's funding still to this day, even. He's betting on them standing by and whatever, therefore. Political representation is why they founded the Labour Party, the Labour movement. But it's lost to them, especially since he's now going to woo the wealthy donors once again, Blair style, to make up the shortfall in his coffers from lost membership. The party ending up in debt, as it did then. The surplus in funding left over by the Corbyn era, long since wasted. Millions of pounds blown with nothing to show for it. And you still get Rachel Reese popping up on TV insisting Corbyn left the party in debt. He didn't. That's a lie. He cleared decades-old party debts and put the party in the black by engaging ordinary people in the hundreds of thousands and standing with and for the trade union movement, which isn't its general secretaries, but ordinary working-class people once more, the likes of you and I. That said, it's not like the unions are necessarily writing blank checks right now either, with the additional funding Labour wants you to get from them being withheld in several cases. So let's look at the evidence here. Let's examine a few other news stories that have floated around on this subject, what Starmer has been doing, and also, crucially, what he and his team have refused to do. Firstly, he put together a fundraising team, which itself is like a who's who of Blairite donors. Wahid Ali is a massive Starmer donor, a Blair ally. Blair gave him a peerage for services rendered, presumably has been appointed to lead a fundraising team for Team Keith. Working with him, he has Michael Levy, uh, nicknamed Lord Cashpoint once upon a time, for the sums he used to hand and raised for Tony Blair, part of which led to claims being made against him in the Cash for Honours scandal in 2006. Not that he was found guilty of any wrongdoing at that point, I should point out. Tony Blair's former manager for high-value fundraising, Vanessa Bocock, is back as well for Team Keith in a similar role. And Lord Sainsbury is also helping with fundraising, having handed Starmer some £2 million by the end of last year after taking his money and leaving whilst, Cam- uh, whilst Corbyn was in charge. Mandelson, the oily git, says all these donors are needed because union funding is being held back for the party by hard-left-controlled unions. 
It's nothing to do with that when the leadership is ignoring the unions and pimping itself out for cash from wealthy donors instead, it seems. Trade unions aren't stupid. They know when their cash is being wasted just as much as potential donors do. Starmer's not as clever as Blair. It's blatant. They all want returns on their investments, after all, no matter who the donor is. Clearly, the debt Blair built up hasn't sunk in with the likes of Mandelson or Starmer, and he's completely in their thrall, of course, and acting accordingly. Starmer did, of course, swan off to the World Economic Forum, despite being an opposition leader. I often get comments in my YouTube uh, videos concerning Starmer about him being a WEF puppet, and it's hard to disagree when he openly said he preferred being amongst the global wealthy elite in Davos than he did in Westminster. It's a very strange thing for the son of a toolmaker, the son of a nurse to say, working class credentials. But then Starmer only brings up his working class links or veneer thereof to win support of working class people, despite promising them nothing except more of what the Tories are dishing out now. There's been a lot of talk about how Starmer is winning over the city lately. Rachel Reeves inviting wealthy Tory donors to breakfast with her. And for talks, presumably more offers of moulding the party with their own hands. Policy for sale, very much how that looks. She's not alone. Less well publicised has been the fact shadow cabinet ministers are all being deployed to schmooze wealthy donors over dinner, sometimes paired up to do so. Look at what Labour are also promising not to do that'll hit the wealthy in the pocket whilst they're at it. They've ruled out a wealth tax, which is incredibly stupid for a Labour party, but a 1% tax on wealth over £10 million would raise some £10 billion in this country. To put that in perspective, it'd cost just £1.3 billion to scrap the two-child benefit cap, rowing back on that earning starmer than it named Kid Starver. But you can see it's a political choice to not do such a thing. The wealthy hit by this would still be richer than anyone else. They would just rather that money flow into Labour Party coffers instead of be taxed, so they hide behind the excuse of fiscal rules to not do anything about it. Another example came just yesterday when Lloyds Bank posted pre-tax profits for 2022 of £3.9 billion. You might have heard about British Gas's profits this week. That's been the headline news. Well, Lloyds made double what they did. Rachel Reeves yesterday, in an interview, ruled out taxing them on that, saying she couldn't see the need or justification to do so. Can you see the justification and need? Well, then you'd make a better chancellor for this country than she will. Again, it's because they want these people to fund their party, so they can tell their membership and their trade union funders, trade unions, the cleanest money in politics, because all their money comes from ordinary people, are not wanted in the party, supposed to represent us. Another Tory party in the making. It's Blair's Labour all over again, but worse. And we can put up and shut up about it, or there's the door. A party that knows there are more than four million kids in poverty and can fix it at a stroke, but willingly won't. Blair lost support because he became too close to big money and the wealthy didn't do enough for ordinary people. People went off in fast as a result. Starmer is already widely disliked. Unlike Blair, who could sell snake oil like he was born to it, the more people see a Starmer, the more they can't stand him. He won't win three terms like Blair. If he beats the Tories in the next general election, he won't last a single term. In power, doing nothing for change, just kissing billionaire backsides, ordinary people will switch off him quite quickly. Fools like Mandelson, 30 years out of date as they are, think they can pull the same con all over again. But many of us already see it coming, have done for some time, and the evidence proving us right is mounting. Do yourselves a favour, vote progressive. My vote is going to the Greens. At least they are proud of their politics enough to have them up on their website at all times, all their policies listed, so they don't need to put policy up for sale to the highest bidder like Starmer Reeves and the rest of the Labour Party appear to be doing right now. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video useful. Please like, share and subscribe if you did. New content out daily. Meanwhile, here's another video recommendation for you where Starmer spent a good chunk of the National Policy Forum bidding off anything he thought the Tories wouldn't like, such as his drive to take their donors from them. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.